Donc bienvenue à cette deuxième session de BDA 2016. Donc, juste une information, il, va y avoir, il y a un changement dans les présentations. On a interverti la présentation 1 et 2, donc ne vous, ne vous trompez pas de titre, enfin, ils vont les réexpliquer. Euh, donc le, cette session s'intitule Réseaux sociaux et flux de données, donc nous allons avoir quatre présentations sur ces thèmes-là. Donc la première présentation va être effectuée par euh, Madi Wacha qui va vous parler de la détection de posts. Po, euh, comment on dit Polyposter, polyposter non, non, en français De spammer De page d'histoire. Non. non, non, not you. Okay. The name. Spammers in French, polyposter. <laughs> polyposter in French. Polyposter. You know a, a new word okay. in French. <laughs> okay. Donc, détection de polyposter dans Twitter. En temps réel, bien sûr. Détection en temps réel. It's hey, you. Can I start Okay, uh, I would like to speak in your face, sorry for uh, French. Uh, I am Madhu Asha, I would like to present my work, PhD, uh, which is about impact of uh, time for spammer detection on Twitter. It, as you know, uh, all of you, um, spam is a well-known problem, but nowadays it's going on, on a social uh, networks. So uh, at the beginning, what's, what do you mean by social spam? Social spam, it's an information appears on uh, social networks where these informations, nobody would like to, to see it. However, we have some kind of this um, information. When someone responds to this information, it will be called a scam. And, and, and in this, uh, these forms of spam it could be a malware and, uh, and phishing. However, we have uh, two things we should uh, talk about. The first thing, it's the risk uh, degree. The risk degree of malware and phishing is, is more than uh, when you have an unwanted content like a normal text, you don't li like it. Because when you have a malware, that means you have a virus that will be injected in your, in, uh, in your, in your PC. However, the difficult detection difficulty uh, is higher for when you have a normal text. Because someone, someone of you may, okay, may view that text, it's a spam or not. But when you have a virus or malware, that means, okay, this, 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 this is no one would like to see it because this definitely all of us agree on that, okay, this is a, a scam. Uh, social spam forms could be in, in the Twitter, could be uh, in mention forms, or it could be in uh, URLs as in here in the tweets, or in, uh, in Facebook, okay, in Facebook you have some, for instance, you have a page, okay, says, okay, please click here, you will have a greetings, okay, once you click on that link, you, you will have a virus injected uh, on your PC. Here is a phishing. The phishing form, okay, you have a URL, that means we'll, we'll open a new window. This new window, it's almost the same for Twitter. You need, you, yeah, for the, the non-expert um, persons, we'll put the password and username and uh, this, this uh, sensitive information will be stolen. And also the same thing, here's an example for, for the Facebook. What's the side effects? Uh, the side effects uh, of spam uh, nowadays uh, in information retrieval, information retrieval, social sign signals affect uh, fake social signals affect negatively on search engine, which means an uh, information retrieval ranking algorithm would like to use these social signals to improve the ranking algorithms. However, but with existence with these uh, with, with these social signals, it's not possible to, uh, to use them. The second side effects, it's about, uh, about polluting real-time search. That means if you have a hashtag you would like to search on it on Twitter, you will, you will have a pollute, polluted tweets. It's, this is, all of these tweets are spam, and it's related to uh, spam pots. The third, effect, uh, the third side effects, uh, when you have a spam, that means there's some kind uh, unwanted content, that means uh, the, now uh, that means will will affect on some statistics where uh, um, where marketers would like to uh, to draw these statistics, and also may pollute the opinion uh, 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 polling. And uh, we have a concrete example uh, in, in, in the American election, uh, as all of them agreed, okay, Clinton will will win, but the, the opposite happened. The Trump win. Uh, the, side, the fourth side effects, the invasion of user privacy. That means when you have a phishing problem, that means there are some sensitive information will be stolen. The fourth side effect, the decreasing in the confidence in social networks. That means for, for me, from my personal overview, Facebook is better than Twitter because Facebook is quite close platform, while Twitter, it's open platform. 
So, in the state of art, there are two approaches used to, uh, uh, to, uh, to fight spam um, problem. The first approach is a honeypot approach, which is about to create, uh, create accounts to attract the spammer. However, this, this, uh, this approach is not good because we have a single, uh, one single point to attract the spammer, and this is not enough to attract mi sometimes millions of spammers on Twitter. However, we have the, the, good, the good thing of uh, this approach, we have exact information and low false positive rate. That means when I would like to, to make a decision about, about a spam accounts, okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure, okay, these accounts are spam. So the machine learning approach, it's divided here uh, about, uh, into uh, appro sub-approaches. The first one is tweet level detection. That means I have a tweet, okay, I would like to say, okay, this tweet is a spam and or, or non-spam. The account level detection, no. I have an account with the tweets and sometimes with direct followers, followers and so on. I would like to classify this account, okay, as a spam account, as a spammer or non-spammer or spam accounts or non-spammer. Okay, what's, uh, for, the tweet level, for the tweet level detection, the main disadvantages for this thing, it's easy to fool. What does it mean? That means, okay, uh, one of these features, number of characters, but number of characters, it's not an, a discriminative uh, feature, okay, to say this, uh, this feature is spam or not. Also, number of features that, is possible, uh, that ca ca could be extracted from tweets, all, uh, also it's not too much, because we have uh, just uh, like a features, okay, number of URLs or number of hashtags in, in the tweet. But what's the, the, st the main strength of this approach? It's uh, simple and not, uh, costly to okay to say okay this is this tweet spam or not for the account level detection uh, the good thing the the, the, the main uh, the main advantage of this approach we have a lot of features could be extracted from from the accounts from the uh, for uh, from the tweets itself and also we can use uh, uh, some kind of graph features like locally clustering or distance between nodes or lo uh, or node between us and also uh, the content and the user, it's not costly to extract, to extract them. However, the, the graph features are complex, which means that I, I, I would like to process or to detect, okay, to judge an uh, account, okay, this is a spam account or not. I have to retrieve all uh, followers and followees and the follower of the followees. But Twitter doesn't, uh, Twitter, Twitter doesn't uh, permit that because the, uh, there is a limitation on the APIs. The, the second thing, we have uh, uh, pure statistical features, and the statistical features are easily to, to, um, to be avoided by a spammer. So we need to uh, um, go, go on in these features with focusing on behavioral features, not the statistical features. So the problem, what's the problem? We have a set of accounts, and also we have the, these, of these accounts, we have a tweet, and we have the direct only, not the, the followers of the followers and so on. We have the followers and the followers, direct followers and followers for each account. We need to define user and content features without going to a graph features, and we need to define a classification function. It's say, okay, f of x and x here could be a, a feature vector, and we would like this, this function should you predict, okay, say this is a spam account or non-spam. And the last thing, it should, should has, uh, that, that function should have high classification rate. So the solution, the solution can come from leveraging the simple uh, attributes and not modifiable uh, in a Twitter, which is the time of property. What does it mean? This means that when someone creates an account on a Twitter, so the creation date, no one, ca no one can modify it because it's, it's stored directly on uh, in the server of uh, Twitter. And also when someone do a post, so also the posting date, it will be fixed. The, th the third thing, uh, we do, uh, we, uh, we, we, do uh, we make uh, some uh, hypothesis about uh, non-spammer will not follow, non-spammer like you, normal user will not follow a, a spammer. And spammer will follow spammers because sometimes a spammer may, may create a, a lot of spam accounts, so we'll let, uh, we'll let each uh, account follow each other. And uh, the, spam, the spammer also have a systematic posting behavior. What does it mean? Does it, that means they create a pot of accounts, let me say one million of accounts or one, the, the 100,000 of accounts, and then program an APIs to do posting not manually like us. 
And uh, five, the, the four things, it's uh, mm, a normal user are mod in posting. That means you may post now and maybe after 10 minutes post or maybe after one hour. But if a spammer would like to do that in a systematic way, every sometimes every 10 seconds, every 10 seconds, every 10 seconds. So our methodology it consists for stages. The first stage is about a data set crawling and annotation. The second, uh, the, the second uh, step is data analysis because we, not all of the attributes are accessible and we have some accounts on, it, uh, on it Twitter might be protected. The, the third thing, it's a feature extraction. So we focus in our work in, 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 in doing or making new features related to user and content without going to graph features because it's complex. And the, the fourth step is using learning algorithm because we have a lot of uh, features, so we need to wait, okay, this feature, it's, it's good uh, to, to it give weights for each uh, feature. And at last, with all of these uh, steps, we will have the predictive model. So uh, use our user features, it's uh, about time weighted user. That means when I have a followers, the followers that has um, high in age or created uh, in, um, since two or three years, I have to wait, give this, this, this account high weight. And uh, for, the, for the accounts uh, th that created recently, I have to give them low weights. Instead of take the, like an abstract features, okay, number of followers. And user age mean, that means I have an account, I, I'm going to, okay, to say this is a spam or not. I have the followers, I take the mean, uh, the, the, uh, the mean in the difference between ages of the followers and followers and so on. And also the same thing for the variance. What does it mean when I have a zero mean and zero variance? That means uh, this uh, this profile and the, the followers and followees are created almost in the same in the same period, which means there's high probability for being a, a spam bot, and and, uh, and consequently we have we have a high probability for have this account as a spam account. And for a uh, profile description similarity, what does it mean when when, uh, when spammer would like to create a spam bot? That means we would like to use the same description in a profile. So I have, I have a profile, I, I get the similar, uh, similar profiles that uh, has sim a similar description, and also I weight them. For the content features, uh, the, 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 the most novel one, it's a posting, beha posting behavior one, I will de de describe in details. Posting, posting behavior, so I, I check, okay, if, if, if the user or the accounts do posting in a systematic way, I will show the mathematical model now. And we have a retweeter's diversity. Uh, that means spammer sometimes put a tweet and then re do uh, retweets, let other spam accounts do retweets. So when we have low diversity, so that means this account has a probability for be being a spam account. Posting diversity, uh, when so, uh, here it's related to a duplicated, duplicated tweets. A normal user should have a, a high diversity, high diversity in the posting. That means different content, not in the same content. So here is an example for uh, for a tweet uh, similarity. So we have a tweet. We take the similar with, with other tweets. This is duplicated, and we reweight we reweight them by the by the difference in in the time. And uh, we use in that getting the uh, tweet similarity, we use callback liberty divergence to compare, la uh, we, uh, to compare a language model between each, uh, for each tweet. And for the posting behavior, we have here, uh, um, the, for the same profile, we have a spam ac account, not spam account. We have an account. We draw the time distribution for hashtag, uh, the hashtag here, it's called the hashtag Liva no pain, uh, no way. And we draw also the time distribution for the another hashtag in the same profile. And then uh, each distribution can be viewed as a time shifted signal. In, uh, in, image in, image in signal processing, we do some, it's called cross correlation. If I have a, a high correlation between them, so we have a, a new, a new uh, signal has an area. If there is no correlation, we will have almost zero error. So we quantify these things by computing the area in the new signal. So using the feature, our features, uh, we first uh, crawl it an annotated data set. It's about 7,000 uh, accounts. Uh, and we, we found that 1,000, uh, it's about spam accounts and 6,000 spam accounts. 
And uh, we, we performed our comparison with the state of art uh, features. We implemented the state of art 70 features. We compared them. And uh, we, in the comparison, we, uh, we unified the, uh, the, the environments. Uh, we, we used a random forest using uh, uh, 100 trees and 10 cross validation and 70 features from the state of art and 20 features using our features. Our features outperform the state of the state of art almost by five percent using um, sorry in terms of accuracy, precision, and recall and if uh, and if media. Uh, we have a problem here when we combine our features with the state of art features. We have uh, we have here the accuracy the accuracy uh, the accuracy decreased. At accuracy and other uh, metrics decreased. Here is ha what have happened. A problem well known in a machine learning is called an uh, overfitting problem. So, in a conclusion, so um, time property it's uh, unmodifiable uh, by user and simple. So in that case, it's an alternative solution for using uh, graph features. And uh, account-based features, it's not real-time features. Our, our work is dedicated to, okay, to process one million, for instance, one million profile, just to reduce the time from one year to just in a one day, but it's not a, a, a real-time. So what's the future work and uh, what I'm going on to do? It's to filter a large scale of fit weeds without going in, in, the feature, in the features or deep features related to uh, account because the limit, these limitations comes from the REST API by, by Twitter. And the second, thing, uh, the, the second thing, it's related to the retrieval for spam accounts. All of the work done in the spam detection, social networks, it's about detection. But no one worked that, okay, uh, let's, what's, what's kind of a query if I put it on a social, uh, on, the, in, on the engine, search engine of Twitter to bring me, uh, for instance, spam accounts. So what's the query? This is, this is, this is the, uh, a good, uh, good question here. And I'm going, I'm going in this uh, research. So uh, at last, just this is one, uh, one thing. Uh, indeed, uh, the spam problem, it's an endless problem. It's like an atomic jerry problem. This is why I put this, uh, this picture. It, it, is, uh, it will end just if, if the users or uh, social networks uh, stopped. Why? Because, it's, because it's spam are, 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 are paid person and the spa, spamming it's like a business. And uh, there is a money inside. And also spammers are intelligent, uh, intelligent users. So this is, this is why it's an endless problem. At the end, I would like, uh, this is a reference. Thanks for listening. My question. Thank you. Some questions? In English, I guess. Yes, in English. If prefer, yeah. No questions? No. So, one remark maybe. I, um, I agree with you to say that Twitter is not exactly the, the, the best um, set to, to, te to test spam. Why did, did not you uh, okay. test on another social on a, on network? On Facebook, uh, in general spammers... Uh, the, the Most why, why Twitter? Fluent. No, 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 no. Why Twitter? Twitter, first yeah. of all, it's, it's a source of information for many applications. In, uh, for instance, in text summarization and so on. There's a lot of applications work on that. So, spammers would like to attack Twitter, not a Facebook, because it's Twitter, it's an open platform. So you can now create a bot of, of spam just in, in, in one hour. But in a Facebook, there is a, a lot of restriction there. So in order to create a, a, a put of or a thousand of accounts, you need the mobile verifications and, and, and so on and so on. So this is why spammers would like to, to go yeah. to Twitter. And also the real-time messaging mechanism in Twitter, it is, uh, no, no, there is no social networks like Twitter in, in a real-time messaging system. So you, so you now put a, um, put a tweet, so now it deliver now. But in Facebook, for instance, maybe was someone do uh, some posting, Maybe in the next day you will, uh, you will see it. So this is why spammer uh, attacks. Uh, so right now you defined um, a set of features, but yes, set of do features. you plan to extend or 
Yes. Mm, study more deeply this. Uh, this yes, I, I, am, I am going now uh, to work on a large scale of tweets, fil filtering uh, 100 million of tweets, just without, without going in a deep features in the accounts and so on and so on. I'm pretty sure we will not have a, a high accuracy, but at the end we, we can increase the quality of the data for, for, uh, for the applications. Some questions? No? questions? no? In, in your experiments, you, you use the only one computer, one machine for? Yes. So perhaps the one solution to reduce the response time is to, to use a, a parallel system, many nodes. No, my, um, in, my, in doing my experiment, just I would like to validate my features. In case if I have uh, millions of data, millions of uh, accounts, so in that case, I, I need a parallel. Uh, it, uh, to work on um, in, in, in doing something in parallel. Yeah, I, I think it is like uh, Hadoop and easily so parallelizable. But uh, for me, the, this data set is small. But when I work in, for instance, 100 million of tweets, I, I, uh, we work on, uh, on our server in Irit Lab, Ozil. Okay, thank you. No more question? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.